Hey friend, welcome to On The Daily. I'm your host, Danielle McCleary, and I am a quantum business coach. I'm the host of this podcast. I'm a multi six figure entrepreneur, co founder, and president of Hype You Media and CEO of Danielle on the Daily Coaching. What I'm really interested in is helping you live a life and have a business that is a full body yes. So, through all of my education and all of my experience, I'm bringing you two episodes a week where I will guide you and give you the tools necessary to scale a massive, sustainable, and sexy business using your intuition, wealth energetics, and human design. What we can call it is business biohacking. So if you're down for that, then I say let's frickin' go. I'm so glad you're here. Hello on The Daily Family. Welcome back to the show. I hope you're having an amazing day. Uh, Breezy and I uh, are getting married later this month, and I've been having a lot of conversations just in general, I feel like lately, about labels and titles and boxes and all these things. And I think it's because a lot of the work that I'm doing in my coaching is uh, centered around people stepping out of their boxes and out of their labels and out of their titles and all these things and um, becoming a self-led version right? This like self-led version of ourselves, this person, this person with personal power. And I've been talking a lot about that. And that's kind of like, (laughs) it's like the hill I'll die on right now. And so it's got me kind of thinking, and I follow this girl on Instagram who said something the other day that was so profound and it was exactly what I think. And if you know me, you've heard me say this, um, so many times, uh, but I, I don't know. I just like don't really talk about it that much because I don't know why. I honestly don't know why. It's it it isn't like a it's not like a I'm worried about what people think. It's not anything. It's just maybe that I've just assumed that it really doesn't have anything to do with my business or it doesn't really have anything to do with my brand. And so therefore I just don't talk about it. However, I've realized especially over the last couple of weeks that it actually has everything to do with my brand and it has everything to do with my business and it has everything to do with what I, I coach on. And, you know, I, I get comments and questions sometimes from people who listen to this podcast or who follow me on Instagram and say things like, you know, I would have never known that you were gay, or I would have never known that you were getting married to a woman because you don't ever post about like LGBT issues or you don't ever, you know, you're not like an activist. And I don't, I don't know if I would consider myself an activist now. Don't get me wrong. Like I absolutely will fight to the death for anyone to be able to do whatever they want with their life, whether that be who they love, what they do with their body, what they put in their body, the choices that they make for their body. I have, I've always been a very consistent person and that is my body is my body, your body is your body. And I, that's even like the the rule in our household. Like my son is such a hugger. Like this little boy loves to hug so much, like so much. And his teacher like had messaged me one day and was like, I just wanted you to know that Owen is not in trouble, but he is very touchy and he likes to hug. And, you know, it's obviously it's fine now because he's in first grade, but as we get older, like, you know, it's going to make people uncomfortable. And I was like, absolutely no problem. Absolutely noted. And the conversation I had with my son was like, your body is your body. Other people's bodies are their body. And we don't touch or we don't comment on anyone else's body. Like we just don't. And that's like the blanket rule. And so like, I've always been consistent. Like I will fight to the death to make sure that people can live the life they want to live. And and this is where, this is kind of what I really wanted to say in this episode was like being gay, loving a woman is the least interesting thing about me. It always has been. And I don't know if you're a person who is listening to this that needs to hear this. And maybe it's not because you're gay, but there's other things that you've been like labeled or that people want to label you and you don't really identify with the label. And this this is for you. Um, I think being gay is the least interesting thing about me. I think I have always been a person where I love people. And I love souls. I connect with someone's soul 
And to me, that has never really mattered whether or not they had a penis or a vagina. Like it didn't matter to me because I fall in love with people. And like, like I love my fiance, like I love Breezy so much. I don't love Breezy because she's a woman. I don't love her only because she's a woman. I love her unconditionally as my best friend, as my partner, as my future wife. And she happens to be a woman. And that is a really hard concept for some people to understand because when people see Breezy and I as two women who are getting married and we are from Los Angeles, people make assumptions about who we are and what we stand for and the things that we'll fight for. And then when we don't stand up or fight for certain things, we are, you know, people, it confuses people. And so I just wanted to make this episode because I think, you know, this happens in our lives, this happens in our business, this happens all over the place where people want to understand people. And we want to understand people through a lens that we understand. And that's normal because we can't understand what we don't know, right? What we don't know, we don't know what we don't know. And if we don't have experience with something that we are seeing as a possible reality, it is going to be overwhelming and our brain immediately is going to want to try to fix or change it. And I've learned that. I learned that a really long time ago. And like, I don't, I don't try to change people's perceptions about what I should be doing, who I should be with, what, you know, I don't try to do that. That's not my job. That's not my, that's not my business. Um, But what I can say is I identify a lot of different ways and I am currently very much in love with a woman and I'm marrying a woman and that very much puts me in the LGBT community. And I have a lot of friends in the LGBT community. I have a lot of friends outside the LGBT community. I am not, I don't classify myself as Christian. I have a lot of really great friends who are Christian. I don't classify myself as Democrat or Republican, but I have friends on both sides of those aisles. And I think that also confuses the hell out of people. People don't understand what to do with someone who can look outside of themselves, who can take somebody else's belief structure and go, I don't agree, or I don't understand what you believe in, but I love you and I respect you for it anyway. And that's who I am. Like I've just always been that person. And you know, there's people in the LGBT community I don't identify with, I don't agree with, I don't re- like relate to at all. There's people in the Christian church I don't relate to at all. And I would never try to change someone, right? And so if you are a person who feels like this, right? If you're like me and you're like, yeah, I just like don't really. I don't really identify with these like boxes and these labels that like people try to put me in. Like I, whenever somebody, so there, okay. So there was a time where when I was, this was really big when I was in network marketing, when I was really working in network marketing, I would get a lot of requests to train other people's teams. And there would be a lot of buzz about me. Now I moved very quickly in my network marketing business, like record, record breaking speed. I moved to the top of the comp plan. And what was being shared was Danielle is the first lesbian to make it to the top of this company. And I remember when that happened, I was like, okay, that's weird because I was never like, I'm an out, like I'm an LGBT advocate. Like that was never it. Like, of course, like I can't believe that I'm the first LGBT woman to make it to the top of this company. It's been around for over 40 years and sure, that's cool, but I didn't make it to the top of this comp plan because I'm a lesbian. I made it to the top of this comp plan because I set my mind. I made my decision. I worked really hard for it. I didn't quit. I, you know, well, there's a whole other conversation about how I actually just like was so stuck in my masculine and burnt all the way out to do it. And I would never do that again. It would never work like that again. I don't care how much you were paying me to do it. Um, it's not like my piece is way more like if it, if it ever cost me my piece, it's too expensive, different conversation for a different day. But it was just strange because people needed a reason to justify that. 
it couldn't just be that this random person came into this business, worked really hard, made it to the top of the comp plan in times that they say is impossible. I think they said that like average is like five to 10 years. I don't know, three to five years, five to 10 years. I don't even know. Five to 10 years, I think. And I did it in like 11 months. And that was crazy. And nobody wanted to talk about the fact that like I had a great network. I did. I I spent a decade building my network. Nobody wanted to talk about the fact that I, you know, said no to so many things so that I could work. Nobody said any, like nobody wanted to talk about the fact that like I, you know, really have the power to be a connector and a networker, like no one's business. Nobody wanted to talk about the fact that like, I'm really good at sales. It was all deduced to Danielle is the top is the first LGBT woman to make it to the top of this company. And I just, from that moment on, I just always remember being like, that is the least interesting thing about me though. Like that doesn't even, what does that have to do with anything? And I think we do this. We deduce people to their race, to their religion, to their sexuality, to their identity. We we deduce people to those things in the name of progress, in the name of wokeness, in the name of whatever the fuck. And I don't know. I mean, I think there's some parts of woke culture that are probably going to be the death of us if we're not careful. And, you know, there is a level of like the pendulum swings, right? And at the end of the day, like I've always said, we're all running this race. The human collective consciousness is running a race. And the goal is to get to the finish line, ascension, right? That's the goal. And we can do that by walking. We can do that by running. We can do that by, you know, being gay. We can do that by praying to God. We can do that by like so many different ways. And all of that's fine as long as we're moving forward. But what we see in our world these days is this attitude of no, but if you're not running like I am, then you're doing it wrong. If you're not jumping on one leg like I am, then you're doing it wrong. If you're not doing this, then you're doing it wrong. And I just can't, I can't subscribe to that. I really, really can't. And I never have been able to. And I just, I just don't think that we should be deducing people to their vehicle, right? Like, how, like one little baby piece of their, of themselves. I don't think we should be doing that. And we do. And that's happened to me so many times, but I don't know, maybe you needed to hear this today. Maybe this is just, an, you know, something that you were like, yeah, I really, I, I really relate to this. Like being gay is the least interesting thing about me. It always will be. And you know, even when I got in a relationship with Breezy, so many people, because it was after like a very painful breakup with my son's dad that was like still very fresh in all, like all things considered. And it was, you know, there was a child involved and it was, it was, it was our child and it was very stressful. And I remember what people were saying because it couldn't just be that these were two people that like maybe were just meant to come together to have a baby. And that was a really beautiful thing. And like, thank goodness we did that because Owen is literally the most perfect thing in the entire world. It couldn't just be that that was supposed to be our story. What made sense for people and what happened in people's brains was, oh, Danielle came out, right? Came out of the closet and now she's with a woman. And then everybody was like, oh, And I was always like, that is so not what happened. Like there was so much more pain involved in that. There was so much more confusion involved in that that had nothing to do with sexuality, had nothing to do with like who was a man and who was a woman and who was, you know, who was married and who like had nothing to do with that. It was literally the classic, like we were on a path that we weren't aligned with and like moving towards like a more aligned, happier life for all people. But people couldn't see it like that because it had to be deduced to Danielle came out of the closet. And so many people will like, you know, try to like fight for my rights. And people ask Breezy and I, before we moved to Texas, like, aren't you nervous to move to Texas as like two lesbian women? And I'm like, no, I'm not. Because you know what? Like what we try to show all day, what I will always show on my social media is love. I show love. I am about love in whatever it looks like. I'm about love. And yes, I love my, I love my future wife. I love her so much. And we show our love. We show it proudly, but it's not like, I will never do it in a way that's like, if you are not okay with my relationship, then fuck you. I just, I don't subscribe to that. And if you are, if you 
like if there are people out there who have made their entire ident- identity, their sexuality, like I, that is so great. That is so great because again, your body is your body and my body is my body. And I think that that is awesome that there's people that do that. I have never made being gay my identity. I have never made when I was in network marketing. And again, like when I switched from network marketing and I decided to kind of like put my business on hold and like really move away from it and focus on my coaching business and focus on my podcast and focus on hype you and focus on these other things. It was this like, there was this, this lack of understanding and people try to deduce it. Right. And I always say like, I never made network marketing my identity. I have a brand. My network marketing business was a, was an extension of that brand. My relationship is an extension of who I am. It is not my identity and it never will be. And so I don't know. I think that there is room in this world for all viewpoints. And I don't think that you need to be, and it's not like I don't support, you know, obviously it's not that I don't support gay rights. It's not that I don't, obviously I do, but it's just not my identity. And my, I've always said like, I don't need other people to be okay with my relationship. I don't I, like, I've had family members that have dated people that I am very against and I do not like. It's not my business though. It's not my choice. I don't get to choose who these people are with, right? That's just not how it is. And, you know, so what do you do? You go to the wedding, you support them. You say, it's not who I would have picked for you, but I'm so happy if you're happy. But it's just one of those things where I don't need other people. Like I'm so confident and so passionate about my relationship. I don't need other people to be okay with it because I am. And I'm confident that like our vibe and like the vibration that we're, that we're operating at does attract that more of that to us, which is why Breezy and I have so many incredible people in our lives, people that are gay, people that are straight, people that are black, white, Asian people that are, you know, in the trans community, people that are like all over the place. Like there are people all over our world that are beautiful beacons of light, that are light workers, that are just the most incredible people and our like labels, right? The societal labels really are the least interesting thing about all of us. So I don't know. I was, I just really wanted to talk about that today and I hope it resonated with you. If you have any questions, you can always come to my Instagram and holler. I'm Danielle underscore on the daily. And you know, a lot of this work that I, a lot of this work, a lot of me being able to say this to you today came after a lot of work, a lot of self-reflection, a lot of returning to my personal power and standing tall into who I was, you know? So this, this, when I tell you, like, I don't need other people to be okay with my relationship. I don't feel the need to justify my relationship to anybody. I understand that there are people that are not there and maybe it's not even a relationship. Maybe it's, you know, anything about your life. Maybe you're not at this point where you don't feel like you need to justify. And what I can say is this is why I do the work that I do. I have a program that will absolutely help you to stand taller in your personal power. It is called the reckoning. It is my signature course and probably the most important piece of content and work that I've ever done. And you can get that by clicking the link in our show notes, or you can go to my website at daniellemcleary.com slash courses and find it there. But I highly recommend you start doing this work because the more you lead yourself and you stand in your personal power, the less you need outside validation from anyone else. And the, the, the more, I think the more inclusive you become, honestly. So I hope this was helpful and I love you and I'll see you on Friday for another episode. Thanks. 